today we are going to discuss about the different congenital anomalies of the urinary bladder so the defects during the birth uh, the congenital anomalies of urinary bladder so urinary bladder it is uh, basically the temporary storehouse of the urine uh, so it is a muscular reservoir of the urine and it lies in the anterior part of the pelvic cavity and it is composed of the detrusor muscle so uh, this is a temporary storehouse of urine and uh, talking about the size shape and position uh, the size varies according to the amount of urine it contains uh, when the urinary bladder is empty so it entirely lies in the pelvis but uh, as it fills uh, with the urine it expands and extends upwards into the abdominal cavity uh, and uh, it reaches up to the umbilicus or even higher than that level when it fills uh, when it get filled with the urine so uh, talking about the congenital anomalies of the urinary bladder mainly we discuss about the bladder extrophy and persistent urethras the bladder extrophy uh, the also called um, the ectopia vesica and uh, uh, the next one is the persistent urethras and the rarely we also find the congenital megacystis uh, as the congenital anomalies of the urinary bladder so talking about the bladder bladder extrophy be or that is also known as ectopia vesica uh, it is one of the common uh, congenital anomalies of the urinary bladder so it is it happens due to the complete ventral defect of the urogenital sinus and uh, the overlying skeletal system so uh, the anterior wall of the bladder it fails to develop there is a big spherical or oval defect in the anterior abdominal wall below the umbilicus and the mucosal edges fuse with the skin the urine spurts onto the abdominal wall from the ureteric orifices the pubic uh, rami uh, is shown in the picture are widely separated and the pelvic ring loses its rigidity right and the rectus muscles they are widely separated and the epispadias is almost always associated with the bladder exostrophy that is also called as exostrophy epispadias complex so these are some of the features of the ectopia vesica or the bladder exostrophy so talking about the incidence the bladder exostrophy is more common in males than in females so um, the ratio uh, is the male 80% and the female 20% 4 is to 1 so basically the bladder exostrophy or the ectopia vesica uh, it is of two types so the complete and the incomplete right uh, the clinical features are uh, the posterior wall of the urinary bladder protrudes through the defect so because the anterior wall of the uh, bladder is not formed along with the uh, the skeletal and musculatures of the anterior abdominal wall so the posterior wall of the urinary bladder it gets protrudes through the defect and it is seen in deep red in color the everted mucous membrane becomes ulcerated and painful it may undergo metaplastic changes to form adenocarcinoma and bleeds rapidly the efflux of urine can be seen from ureteric orifice and when this mucous membrane is gently pulled upwards the more pale white trigon becomes visible so these are some of the clinical features of the ectopia vesica and we can find the different associated abnormalities along with the ectopia vesica or the bladder extrophy so uh, relating to the pubic rami the pubic rami is, are widely separated uh, there is absent pubic symphysis because the two pubic bones they are not fused with each other so there is absence of pubic symphysis the pelvic ring is less rigid the humors are rotated externally and the patient gets presented with the waddling gait right because of the the humors are rotated externally so talking about the umbilical uh, associations along with the uh, bladder exostrophy or uh, ectopia vesica the umbilicus may be absent or there may be the presence of umbilical hernia so talking about the genitalia in male epispadias is almost always associated with the bladder exostrophy uh, the penis gets broader and shorter than the normal the penis is drawn up and fixed to the abdominal wall the scrotum is ill developed the testis the normal or they can be ectopic or they can be maldescended the prostate and seminal vesicles are often rudimentary or absent 
so talking about the genitals in female uh, we can find the cleft clitoris uh, the labia minora are found to be separated and the uterus and vaginal anomalies can also be found as associated with the ectopia vagica so uh, the hernia talking about the hernia the umbilical hernia may be present and bilateral inguinal hernia may be associated with undescended testis so complications of the bladder dystrophy uh, the exposed vesical mucous membrane is usually ulcerated with hemorrhage so it may become more much painful hydronephrosis can be present due to the utero vesical obstruction there can be recurrent ascending infections uh, through the exposed uh, ureteral ureteric opening there can be metaplastic changes in the half of the patients the die due to the renal failure so half of the patients of the bladder dystrophy or the ectopia vesica they die of the renal failure and the talking about the treatment the treatment is obviously the surgery and uh, uh, in surgery mm, we can do the diversion of urine into the colon or the ileal conduit and excision of urinary bladder and closure so and a reconstruction of bladder and sphincter within first year of life so within the first year of life we can perform the reconstruction of bladder and the sphincter so for this the osteotomy of both iliac bones just lateral to the sacroiliac joints is done and the urinary bladder is closed the urethra is reconstructed behind the pubis and the pubic bones are brought in the midline and fixed together so these are the treatment principles of the bladder dystrophy and there are certain complications of the treatment or the surgery so they they, they can be the infection the stricture formation uh, mainly in the uh, uh, the ureteral uh, the ileo ureteric anastomosis right and the recurrent pyelonephritis uh, hypercholeremic acidosis incontinence and renal failure so regarding the urinary diversion if the urine gets exposed to the the gi tract then uh, we can go through the hypercholeremic acidosis so this is all about the uh, the bladder dystrophy or the ectopia vesica so the next one the next uh, congenital anomalies of the urinary bladder is the persistent urachus so talking about the persistent urachus first we have to remember about the allantois allantois uh, it is uh, a structure that uh, connects the umbilicus to the apex of the urinary bladder during the uh, fetal life so the this allantois it ultimately becomes the urachus the urachus becomes obliterated that is also known as the median umbilical ligament and it extends from the apex of urinary bladder to the umbilicus so regarding urachus we can find these three main anomalies that is the patent urachus incomplete obliteration and the urachal cyst uh, if both the ends are obliterated if this is closed this uh, umbilical end is closed and the uh, bladder end is also closed and in between it remains the patent means in between it is there is will be the formation of cyst urachus so regarding talking about the treatment of the patent urachus as we already discussed the main reason for um, uh, being patent urachus exposed or found is the lower urinary tract obstruction so if we track if we manage the lower urinary tract obstruction then this condition can be managed somehow right and if it cannot be managed so ultimately we have to go for the excision of the umbilicus with excision of the urachus down to the apex of the urinary bladder so up to the apex of the urinary bladder we excise the umbilicus and excise the urachus and we close the urinary bladder at the apex so if there is failure of umbilical in to obliterate so it gives rise to urachal sinus of the umbilicus means the umbilical in is patent means that is not obliterated or closed means there it can be the formation of sinus in the umbilicus right so in through the sinus we can see the discharge of mucus through the umbilicus and it often gets infected and if there is failure of vesical end to obliterate it does not produce any symptoms and remains unknown to the patient right so it remains as a diverticulum there so and treatment of this incomplete obliteration is the excision of urachal remnant right that is known as the urethral cyst so the middle portion remains patent 
there is secretion of the patent portion from cyst the secretions uh, that are secreted from the patent portion they form cyst and it may increase in size right so an immobile swelling in the midline in the hypogastrium deep to the umbilicus can be felt right if infected that becomes painful and tender uh, later on adenocarcinoma may develop and stones may develop that can be identified by x-ray so the inside the in the within the uracal cyst stones may get developed so its management is the excision of uracal cyst along with the remaining uracus and closure of apex of urinary bladder and if adenocarcinoma has developed so radical we have to go for the radical resection right so this is all about the persistent uracus so we have already talked about the two congenital anomalies that is the bladder exostrophy or the ectopia vesica and the patent uracus and uh, the different forms of the patent uracus right we have learned about so the next one is the congenital megacystis so congenital megacystis it is infrequently occurring anomaly investigated during prenatal ultrasonography scanning right we can see uh, we can uh, diagnose it during the intrauterine life of the fetus right it is diagnosed in the prenatal usd scanning so it is it gets uh, complicated uh, by associating with the gi disorders such as mmihs that is megacystis microcolon intestinal hypoperistalsis syndrome and if it is isolated that means the isolated congenital megacystis is the congenital megacystis without the gi complications right that can be isolated congenital megacystis or the congenital megacystis associated with the gi disorder so it is the very rare entity the congenital megacystis most commonly the congenital anomalies of the urinary bladder that we find is the uh, bladder dystrophy and the per persistent urachus this is all about the congenital anomalies of the urinary bladder